Hey guys, even here, so yesterday we had an opportunity to watch Mr. Olympia quote-unquote press conference and in case you guys haven't watched the live stream, I'm gonna show you a couple of parts, some highlights of this event and um, you know guys, I'm all about promoting bodybuilding in the best light possible and I hate to do this, but when something is wrong, when something is not done well I have to be honest and say, this press conference was a complete disaster this was horrible and i'm gonna show you a couple of really awkward parts of this of this show i mean it's not it wasn't a press conference i mean there was no press and it didn't look professional it was more like a failed attempt of a stand-up comedy show I mean, it was, like, really cringy, and <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm gonna show you a couple of parts which I found to be kind of interesting, uh, but overall, it was a complete disaster. So I'm gonna show you <laughs> which parts were really funny, really awkward. So I hope all this negative feedback that these guys are receiving is going to make them go back to the original setup of the press conference, because this just doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense, and the way they chose who's gonna be there and who's not also, didn't make sense plenty of times so like overall it was not good it was pretty bad us hardcore bodybuilding fans we just want to see these guys a little bit we want to hear them say a few words we don't really ask for too much this is this is probably enough for us but if somebody was new in this sport and watched this press conference they would be really turned off so the first interview was of the mr olympia champion big Ramy. So I'll show you him first and don't worry, I'm not gonna show you too much of him, I don't wanna torture you <laughs> because to be honest, listening to Big Ram is it's a torture, really. I know he's trying hard and English is not his native language, but it's not easy to listen to him, let's be honest. Check it out. We had a hard time the last two years because that, that star in front of us, the making that uh, pandemic, he happened to the world, but my, our game is growing like crazy. We we'll have 30 competitors right here. He will be in the open and a lot of competitors around the world right now. We are growing like crazy. Even the world is back a little bit. But the game, he gave he back the strong. So that, that was big, Rami. I know I'm being harsh, but let's be honest, guys. I'm sure you agree with me. Anyways, his physique is the best in the world, so he deserves to be the Mr. Olympia. I just hope he worked on his English a little bit more, and uh, I wish he was uh, a little bit more outspoken, but it is what it is. Uh, then, the other guys from the Open that were at the press conference also, you know, weren't very <laughs> entertaining. Uh, check this out. <laughs> Yeah, that was your top three finisher from last year, Hari Chopin, who, as you can see, doesn't speak English at all. And um, yeah, that was the part with him. He had a translator with him. So yeah, interesting, right? Uh, let me show you what Brandon Curry had to say. Uh, for this preparation, uh, it's been about four months away. Uh, just to make uh, sure I, I come in with a, a better package than previous uh, seasons. Uh, Let's be honest, guys, Brandon Curry is pretty boring. I mean, he can be interesting if he has the right interviewer, like when he did a podcast with Fuad Abiyad, he was, he, was, he was okay, he did well, but when he is trying to stay professional, like he is here, he's very boring, it's very hard to listen to him, so I don't want to trouble you with that. The next part I found a little bit interesting, so it was the other guys from the Open, uh, below the top three, blah, 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 blah. So you had the blessing of Audibu, you had Ian Valier, William Bonac, Michael Crisio, Nick Walker, Derek Lansford, Hunter Labrada, and Rafael Brandau. Also, there was Andrew Jacked. For some reason, they invited Blessing instead of, for example, inviting Samson Dauda. Also, they invited Rafael Brandau, and I'm pretty sure Samson is going to destroy both of these guys. But I understand, Rafael was mentioned in the top 5 by Brandon Curry, and also he has a lot of fans because he's from Brazil, and Brazil has a lot of crazy bodybuilding fans, so I get that. And Blessing, they were expecting him to make a show, and he did do that, but, you know, he's trying really hard to be entertaining entertaining and you know he's he's forcing it a little bit too much if you ask me he's literally saying to the audience do you guys want to be entertained that's not something you should say like you should just try to be funny if you want to do that and you know he's kind of funny he's trying hard i like that i respect that but really he's not in the consideration uh, for being one of the top guys so you know even though he's funny he's trying to be funny 
I don't think he should be up there, really. I would like to see an honest conversation between Nick and Hunter, between uh, Andrew Jack and Kreezo. Like, these guys that are really, really good bodybuilders, I would like to hear them speak. I don't want to watch stand-up comedy. I mean, a failed attempt of stand-up comedy. So first, I want to show you a little clip of Hunter Labrada and Nick Walker back and forth, because these guys are actual competitors. They were fourth and fifth last year. So these guys are actual rivals. And Bob Gicarillo asked Hunter Labrada, what the does he think what people are saying about he was not supposed to be uh, Ford and Nick was supposed to beat him last year? Bob asked him that. He asked him, was he supposed to place higher? And he also asked Nick Walker the same question. Let me show you. Hunter got a gift. Nick Nick should have beat Hunter. Hunter should have beat Nick. Does it bother you? Does it get to you at times? Or The only people's opinions that matter are the ones that judge me. Yeah. And their opinion was that I was fourth. What did you think about your placing? Should you have been higher? No, I shouldn't have been higher. No? Did you have big Rami winning? I did. All right, so that was Hunter Lobrada. He's the way his father used to be. He's kind of a little bit robotic. He's always politically correct, as were his answers. But I think he was honest. He doesn't believe that he was supposed to place higher, and he did. And he believes that the judges did the right decision, that he wasn't supposed to place lower. But even if he felt otherwise, he wouldn't have said it. So even though he wasn't very controversial, he was honest. And he is well-spoken, so I appreciated him. And I wish I heard more from him and Nick Walker and their back and forth instead of Blessing versus Nick Walker. Next, I'm gonna show you what Nick had to say in regards to whether he was supposed to be higher than Hunter Labrada. Check this out. I will 100% be in the first call out. A lot of chatter last year that you should have beaten Hunter Labrada. Should you have? Just a moment, I had to pause here. I don't know what this glitch was in Nick Walker's head. He's usually very outspoken, kind of. He does all his podcasts and stuff like that. But something happened to him here for a second. He was nervous or shy. It can happen to everybody. I don't want to make fun of him. But, you know, it was kind of an awkward moment. So I had to pause here. But let's continue. The things that he said after this moment were pretty interesting. Oh, now you're, sh <laughs> now you're shy after all this whole year of stuff online? And I do think I should have beat Hunter. All right, so that was all the back and forth that we got from Hunter and Nick. Unfortunately, that was all. I wish there was a little bit more of that, but it is what it is. And here in this photo, you can see what I was telling you about uh, Hunter's skeletal proportions. So his head, his skull is enormous. It's much, much bigger than everybody else. Like uh, you can see right here in comparison to Nick, how smaller, how much smaller Nick's head is compared to Hunter. And that's why Hunter seems much smaller in his individual photos, but on stage, he is an actual mass monster. Also, have you noticed that Hunter's eyes were kind of closed a little bit too much these past few days in all these photos? Maybe he did a little Botox before he went to the Mr. Olympia. It kind of looks like that. He kind of looks like he just woke up from an afternoon nap and he slept for three hours with his face uh, facing the pillow. So, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm guessing it was just a Botox. From what I heard lately, it's a pretty common thing to do when you are at the age of around 30, and Hunter is, I think, 30 plus, so he probably wanted to look pretty for the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> we are going off the topic here. I just had to mention this because I really noticed this many times. Anyways, now let's move on to Andrew Jacked. I don't want to show you too much of him because he was speaking a lot, man. I wasn't expecting him to be this outspoken, but he was speaking a lot. Uh, his English is pretty good, it's not fluent, it's not really perfect, he's not native speaker, but it's good. And, uh, you know, he was he was speaking a lot. He didn't really say too many interesting things, some parts were kind of interesting, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of it. I mainly liked the part when he was uh, going a little bit back and forth with Ian Wallier, so that was interesting, check it out. What are you expecting out of this weekend? Uh, I think everyone should just grab some popcorn and soda, strap on your seatbelts, and um, <laughs> we'll give you guys some entertainment. You hear about all these predictions and shows. Everybody's got a podcast these days, and they throw out these names. And Andrew Jack, and Derek Lunsford. And your name always seems to kind of escape people. They, oh, that's right, you got Ian, too. Sure. Yeah, uh, about the podcast things here. You know, some people just keep running their mouths and saying some bullshit. And um, Ian is one of them. And um, where is his friend, Fouad? It's one of them. And um, they said so many things about me before the Texas Pro. You didn't have legs. And uh, what happened? Well, they ate the words, innit? And they said the same thing about me before the UK. And they ate their words too, innit? 
So Andrew Jack called out Fu Arabia and uh, Ian Wallier because they were saying that Andrew was not going to do as well as he did for taxes in UK. Uh, I guess he took it very personally. I, I heard from Fuad already that Andrew doesn't like him very much. He was very upset. He was very offended by them not uh, believing in him. Also, a very interesting thing here is how big Andrew actually is compared to these guys. He's definitely the biggest guy on this stage by far, by far, man. He's enormous. He's actually dwarfing everybody here. And so at this point, I feel like Andrew is going to place higher than I originally thought. Anyways, after Andrew's little speech, Ian Valier had the opportunity to talk. So let's uh, check him out. Let's hear what he had to say. Ian. Yes, sir. This guy's bringing a strong game, man. He's bigger than life. He is Jack. He's 1-3. But you're no slouch yourself, my friend. You were in the Olympia last year. He wasn't. Yep. I've been here. I'm battle-tested for sure. <laughs> no, you're not shy either when it comes to uh, the battle of the uh, podcast and putting your, your feelings out there and stuff. So what do you think about all that stuff, Ian? I think it's my opinion, and I give it straight up how it is. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And that's kind of how it is. All right. So where's Xandro going to place in this show? We'll find out tomorrow. Where do you think he's going to? Is he going to be standing next to you at any time? We'll find out tomorrow. No, man. Come on, no. Hell no. Come on. Right. Let's you, just be honest. If you, you want, if you know want to peel I mean? it down right now no. and show, I'll give you my assessment. No, no. You, you show me right now, I'll tell you where I think you'll place. That went pretty well. That was entertaining, at least to me, because Ian is very outspoken. He is very blunt and honest, and he actually speaks his mind. So that was it as far as this part. Andrew Jack didn't want to strip down and show his physique on stage, even though Bonak tried to help him. But no, that didn't happen. Mikhail Krizio did take his shirt off. You're going to see that in a moment. Before we get to that, let me show you a little part when Nick Walker and Blessing of Audible had their own uh, stand-up bit. Let me show you. Brick! We've gone finished business, my guy. Did you say brick? Look at the guy. <laughs> <coughs> there is no bi you business to be your finished. Troops? You talking? I don't talk to people in the third you, call outs. You talking? Yeah. You to hey, listen. Hang on. Hang on, he's got. Listen. Le you can say all you want. You can say all you want. What, am I, what I'm about to say well, is. Well, that's why you talk too much, because you listen, won't ever be. Listen, beat listen. Me. You've never stood next to my best. Friday night, it's gonna happen. Friday night, I'll break you down. Saturday, your head is getting decapitated, my guy. With legs like that, you'll break yourself down. <laughs> well, hang on a second, hang on. I gotta say, I love this. I love this. As you guys know, I have Nick Walker winning this show, the Mr. Olympia, and I'm not a big fan of, of Lessing of Audible or his personality. I mean, the, the one that he's trying to portray on social media. When I watched his interview with Fuad Abiyad, where he was honest and when he was actually himself, I like that. But his personality on IG, uh, his role that he's playing, this, this boogeyman or whatever, I don't like that. It, it, it's kind of, you know, a failed attempt of a rivalry. These guys are not actual rivals. Hunter and Nick, they are rivals. Big Ram and Brandon Curry, those are actual rivals. But, you know, Blessing is actually in third call out. So what Nick had to say to him was was pretty harsh, you know, he, he actually, he, he put him down quite a bit by saying, I don't speak to guys uh, in the third call out, and also by saying, you're gonna, you're gonna break yourself with those legs, so he basically told him he has small legs, and, you know, even though it's not real, their rivalry, it's still entertaining to hear this kind of stuff, this kind of banter, uh, I just wish it was happening between some guys who are actual rivals, but if nobody else is gonna do it, Blessing has to do it, so I hope Blessing is gonna get to that level to be an actual uh, threat to Nick Walker, and then it's gonna be more entertaining. Also, we had an appearance of Rafael Brandao, check this out. Results, and see Rafael Brandao coming from Brazil and boom, kick the ass. That was hilarious, right? <laughs> Not really. And then we get Mikhail Krizio just showing up right there and stripping off his clothes and showing us his physique. And he's a big guy, man. He's a big guy. He's really big. He's comparable to Andrew Jack as far as his conditioning. I don't know. He doesn't seem like he's going to be absolutely peeled. But, you know, he looks good. He looks good. Uh, in his story recently, he said that he's going to be happy if he's top 15. He did not say that he wants to be top 10 or top 5 or whatever. He's happy with top 15. But I feel like he's going to place higher than that because of his size, because of his freaky proportions and shape and structure. Uh, maybe his conditioning is not going to be incredible as it seemed in those photos. But I still feel like he's going to be in that top 10. We'll see. 
Soon enough, now get ready for the worst part of this press conference, the most awkward part of the entire thing. This was just a super awkward moment when these guys mistakenly interrupted Classic Physique guys. They were on stage literally for like five minutes. And you know, those guys are pretty interesting. Unfortunately, for some reason, there was no Urs Kalatsinski or Amondino. There was just Brian, who is not gonna be in top five this year, I believe, Terence and Chris Bumstead, and they were on that stage for like a few minutes, and then right in the middle of, I think, Chris speaking, loud music started, and they started announcing these wheelchair guys. So one entered the stage, and classy guys were like, what is this, are we gonna have a press conference together with them? But then they invited another one, and they started interviewing them, and the classy guys just slowly walked away very awkwardly. You could see their faces, they were so confused, as they should be, as I was, I don't know what this was, I'm gonna show you in a second. I mean, there were all categories in this press conference. I don't wanna show you bikini. I mean, I love bikini. My girlfriend competes in bikini. When I go to shows physically, I always watch bikini, but I don't wanna watch the Mr. Olympia stage. I don't care about the press conference, uh, listening to those girls or all other divisions. Like, the most popular divisions are uh, Mr. Olympia Open, Classic Physique, and then maybe 212, and that's it. All other categories are not very popular. People that are coming to watch those categories are mainly family and friends from the competitors. Like, there are no bodybuilding shows held because of those guys. They are held because of Open and Classic Physique guys. That's right. Classic Physique guys did not receive respect that they deserve. They were on stage for a few minutes and they interrupted them, and that was it. They had, like, the shortest amount of time during this quote-unquote press conference and I didn't like that at all that was a huge mistake by the by the organizers they probably thought there wasn't enough time so they cut them short very very stupid I don't like this that's why I had to call out this press conference as horrible disaster let me show you this this was so awkward man back then oh he said the first time I ever did it. classic this is literally how it was. Brian was speaking and the music just started and they started announcing these uh, wheelchair guys. Brian still tried speaking but they couldn't hear him because of the music and it was so awkward. Please welcome to the stage. Check these guys out. They're looking, look at their face, look at Brian's face. They don't know what is happening. Like, what's this gonna be? Two categories together? Look at Bob Chicarillo's face. He's also very much confused. Look at him. What is this? What is happening? And now they're applauding. <laughs> Bob is really confused. And so, I, I, but these guys, virtual guys, they didn't, they didn't feel confused. They just entered the stage, said hello, everybody with big smiles on their face, and they just owned this stage. So they basically <laughs> look at Chris. Then the other guy came and uh, Terence was, was laughing, he was also confused. Chris was just like, okay, we're gonna just go, okay, what are we supposed to do now? Well, they just said hi and they just slowly walked away awkwardly. What else could have they done? I mean, they, they were so confused, as was everybody. And that's how Classic Physique part of the press conference ended uh, very abruptly and, uh, and strangely, awkwardly. So again, the entire press conference was a complete disaster. I hope the guys that need to hear this will hear this, not just from me, but other channels, other uh, analysts, commentators, whatever you want to call us. I hope everybody is going to criticize this because this was horrible. I hope they will fix this. They will go back to the original setup next year and we will forget about this mess that, that, that happened here. Also, I hope the show itself is going to be uh, held. Look at this. <laughs> Look at Blessing. I hope the show is going to be held properly. I hope it's not going to be a failure like this press conference. I mean, this Mr. Olympia could have been one of the greatest of all time. I, I don't think press conference could have been that great. It's not Kai versus Phil. Those guys back in the day were very well spoken. Today, many of the guys in the top six, top ten, don't really speak English or they don't really speak it fluently. So you can't expect too much. But at least you could have heard more from uh, Classic VZ guys at least. But that was a failure overall, a complete failure of press conference, if you ask me. If you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. Or if you agree, you can also tell me about that. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Mr. Olympia coverage and all kinds of bodybuilding content in the future. Future. So guys, again, stay tuned, like this video, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye-bye.